Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of Polestar Driver. Thanks for joining me today, it's great to have you with us. Today we're going to look at range from the numbers that we've collected so far. So let's dive into the numbers. First up, I was taking a look at uh, the official range for the Polestar 2. So you know that we have a WLTP, which is a European standard for measuring the range of a car and WLTP for the Polestar 2 is 292 miles or 470 kilometers. In America they have EPA range which is calculated differently and in America the Polestar 2 EPA range is 233 miles and 375 kilometers. But today I want to introduce you to the PDRW. What does that stand for? The Polestar Driver Real World Range. Right? And how do we get these numbers? We calculate these from all of the numbers that you guys have sent. And we've put all those numbers together. And this is what the outcome is. First of all a reminder. If you haven't done so yet. Visit the website at polestardriver.com. And there you'll see a page like this where you can enter your trip data. Everything submitted here is anonymous. And there's only five required fields that you need to fill in. The name slash alias field is optional. But if you'd like to track your numbers for your submissions, then use the same name slash alias that you, when you submit your trips. On this website, there's been a few updates in the last week. Let me just run through those quickly. So we added a field for wheel size, which can also affect the range. Uh, we added the software version of your car. Uh, then we published the January PDF report on the website. It's there for you to go and look at, but not much data because we only started collecting from other users in February. And the most recent update there is that we've added the temperature in Fahrenheit so that our American friends do not need to convert the temperatures to Celsius. Just put in the Fahrenheit number and we'll convert it for you. Next slide shows uh, the progress of how we're getting along. So, so far we've received 84 submissions and we are approaching the 6,000 miles recorded or nearly at 10,000 kilometers, which is great. And on this chart you can see the first, up until December, basically was only my recorded trips. Jan some, some users have added January trips. But there you can see in February, we've made a huge leap with 47 trips added so far. We're still one more week to go. So a big thank you to everyone who submitted their data. Uh, it's really useful. Uh, this slide here shows all those people who have submitted data and filled in the name slash alias. So here you'll be able to track uh, for your user what the numbers work out to for all the trips that you've submitted. A big thank you again to all of you. You're really helping this project. So let's take a look at uh, the range numbers in a bit more detail. So currently we have data from five countries with 17 contributors who filled in uh, their name slash alias on the trips. And in total, we have eight, 84 trips logged. Uh, now, if we take a look at the range, so the range all uh, slide will always show you uh, the range with miles range in the blue at the top and kilometer range in the orange at the bottom. So what we do here is we take all of the submissions, whether it's in miles or kilometers, we put all the numbers together and then we calculate the real world range and as you can see there in february we're looking at an average of 177 miles or 285 kilometers so this slide here is the aggregation of all data whether it's miles or kilometers the next sh slide shows you the range by country so on this slide we will uh, plot a line for each country submission because obviously uh, ranges in different countries will be affected by the most influencing factor, which is temperature. So here you can see we've already got uh, the blue line for GB, 
which is mainly my submissions from September to December. Then January and February we start picking up your submissions. So there you can see 178 for the UK in February so far, 178 miles. And for US there's one or two entries at 189 mile average. Down the bottom you see the range in kilometers and uh, for each of the countries. So Netherlands has got some January, December, January, February numbers and uh, the other countries who have only submitted February, uh, that chart will start drawing itself in the next month. This uh, next slide shows uh, country details. So what I've done is I've just broken down the numbers by country, shows you how many trips there are, how many miles or kilometers have been recorded by people in those countries. Then we have the average distance, average temperature, uh, average kilowatt hours per hundred, and the calculated range in either miles at the top or kilometers at the bottom. In kilometers, so we have one GB listed in kilometers, so that's for one of our submitters who lives in GB but uh, gets all the numbers out of his car uh, in kilometers. So that's why there's a GB down there. But then you can see uh, Netherlands, we've got 12 trips logged so far. Uh, 285 uh, kilometers range. Uh, then we've got Norway and Belgium with two trips each. So keep submitting your data. The more data we get, the more uh, realistic these numbers will appear in the reports. So this week I have uh, a question for you, which um, hopefully you can send me your answers in the comments below. So currently, I calculate the range based on a 75 kilowatt hour usable battery. Now this number varies depending on who you speak to, which forums you look at, and I'm not sure what the correct usable number is. If you know or you have a theory on what number we should be using for these calculations, please pop it in the comments below. We'll take a look and see how we can arrive at a, a better figure that we can use in all the calculations for these reports. So the question is, what number should I use for usable battery? Let me know and I'll take a look at those and see if we can improve this calculation. That's all we have for this week. Thanks very much for joining me. Don't forget to visit the website at polestardriver.com and send us your trip data. Let's see how many trips we can log in there before the end of February. And then in the first week of March, we, I will be creating the February report and we'll be sharing that in a video and then put the information onto the website also. If you have not subscribed to this channel yet, please do so by clicking on the button below. Click on the notification icon and select all to be notified of any new videos that are posted. And if you like this video, please give it a big thumbs up Thanks again for joining and I'll see you again soon.